beginning of another day of work at the Waste Divide in Antarctica. Here, over the past five years, the U.S. set an ice core drilling depth record, penetrating two miles through West Antarctica's ice sheet. Evidence from the WACE and other ice cores are providing scientists with data about Earth's climate behavior over the past 800,000 years. It's clear the Earth is warming, and it's not the first time. 18,000 years ago, the ice sheets started melting. At about the same time that mysterious signals, nicknamed Old Faithful, showed up extensively in radar images. The uh, causes of the ice ages are still not completely understood. We know it has something to do with the Earth's orbit around the sun. We want to know what are the other things that must be uh, changing. All right, so like any really interesting project in science, it always starts with a great question. Now, the mystery is in this time period. It said there's volcanoes that might have gone off, but we don't know where, how, how big, what, where they came from, and most of all, did they influence something? So we had a, a question, you know, what exactly happened 18,000 years ago that caused the climate to change? And so naturally we want to go back into that level, that level of ice in the core and, and get uh, more ice out of it. Moving the drill structure to bore a new hole was not an option, and time was running out for the Challenge Dome. Planning this it, it involved uh, scientists working with engineers, so what we were uh, telling them is the exact depth uh, that we wanted them to target in the sampling. In 2012, engineers at the University of Wisconsin responded to scientists' requests for additional cores, taking on the challenge of designing a never-been-done-before technique called replicate coring. The disk drill was originally designed to, with the idea of replicate coring or deviation drilling in mind. The uh, science community has wanted to be able to do a replicate core in a borehole for probably 20 years now. Yeah. We've, they've been talking about it, and, and uh, this is the first time it's ever been done. For this portion of the project, we um, added some new functionality to the drill, which we call actuators. They're um, a section that has three arms on them that, that will come out and push the driller against the wall or allow you to tip the drill at an angle. So this section is the first actuator arm section. We call these the lower actuators, and those are the arms that will push out um, to direct us to the proper side of the hole. Up here we have another actuator section. What's unique about this one it is, is it has small knife blades on here. And we actually use those for anti-torquing purposes. When we send these arms out, those knives are going to grab into the side of the wall and prevent the top part of the drill from spinning. If the entire drill rotated, you can imagine that the entire cable would start nodding up on itself. So we need to keep this part stationary. It's, it's certainly Here. been challenging. Um, for one, this has never been done in ice, which is a new challenge. Um, secondly, we're doing this on the high side of the borehole, so that the borehole has a tilt to it and we're going off the high wall. And the reason for that is um, there's a group of borehole logging scientists that like to put tools down this hole for the years to come. And they need to be able to put this tool past our deviations and not get it hung up. So we are required to go on the high side of the hole, which makes it very challenging because you're working against gravity. and and uh, you have this long, thin drill that, kind of like a pencil, but when you tip it up at an angle, it likes to droop. I mean, you can only make it so stiff, but it still wants to sag, so you have to work against gravity and against the flexion of the drill. And um, in testing last year, that was some of our problems, is we had um, a drill that had a little bit too much flex to it, and when we go down and try to cut, it wanted to just walk around in the, in the hole down there and not actually focus the cutting where we wanted it. So. So with the information we gained last year while testing, we went back and um, re-looked at the, uh, the physical stiffness of the drill and how it reacted, um, did some small changes to the electronics portion of it, and then from that we determined we needed to build a full test tower, a full-scale setup that we could put this drill on and then actually measure what it's doing and then calibrate um, computer models so that we could simulate it. And um, then we make changes in the field now, we can run them back through our models and see exactly how the drill is going to respond to that. Uh, we're looking at four specific depths. The second tar target depth is a, uh, is a large volcanic uh, event at about uh, 18,000 years um, in the past. And uh, we're looking at the relationship between that and some, and some climate uh, events that occurred then. Welcome to the control room. The drill is right now about two kilometers below us. So we obviously can't see it at this point. 
And what we're trying to do right now is to create a notch or a pocket for the drill to move over to do a replicate core. So um, we go down to the selected depth and start working on the, the sidewall, doing passes up and down with a cutter we call a brooch. It's a non-rotating type, um, kind of a conical shaped cutter that allows us to shave the sidewall, much like you would um, plane wood with a hand plane. Lots of numbers scrolling by. Depth is where the bottom edge of the drill currently is, and we're doing an upstroke now. Today we start our stroke at 1,952 meters, and we carry all the way up to 1,935 meters, so it's a 17 meter upstroke that we're doing. From there we get a notch started about 80 millimeters deep in the wall, and then go back with what we call a milling head. It's a rotary tool that cuts on the, the bottom face of it, and that allows us to kind of square out a ledge on the wall, and then we can go in with a coring head and start recovering ice core from a deviation that's about one degree different in tilt from the parent borehole. That allows us to step out of the, the main hole or the parent hole and start collecting replicate ice cores. One of our deviations back we had um, well coring off in one of these side shoots we had a, a cutter head or a cutter screw that failed. When that came off, the cutter head tooth came out, went rattling around in there, wiped out another tooth, snapped a bunch of pins, some more screws, and we got left with this was what we left in the bottom of the borehole was some beat up teeth and parts. With that, you cannot proceed on until you get those pieces out of your way. So we had tried um, building some heads with magnets on the end to go down and just pick the pieces up, and uh, that did not work. So then we. Um, Based on a, a Danish design and a tool they use called a, I call it a conical tool. It's basically a, a cone point end that goes on the drill and allows you to drill this cone shaped pocket in the bottom of the hole. And then the pieces that you've left down there fall to the middle and you can come back with a coring tool and go around the outside. So that was something that didn't exist here previously and we didn't have with us. So um, a machine shop is on site here and I was able to myself one of their colleagues design and build a new head and then deploy it down the borehole a couple days later. So this is the first core from the fourth uh, replicate um, deviation hole and uh, the top depth is uh, 1951 meters. Um, the uh, curve you see on here is made by the, the uh, broaching tool and you can see the, the marks from the tool as it pulled its way up. Um, they were able to land on a milled ledge at the top, the flat area here, and, uh, and drill with a one meter core barrel, a piece that was about 0.7 uh, meters long. Um, we're fully round uh, by the bottom um, and we're still uh, a little ways above our our science, uh, science goal ice, so we're in good shape. We'll have fully round ice by the time we get to our, our target depth. The Old Faithful record may have been created by a highly unusual series of eight volcanic eruptions occurring over 170 years. Labs receiving the replicate cores will analyze sulfur and aerosol data to determine how or if these events contributed to the end of the last ice age. The groundbreaking new replicate coring technology will deliver much needed new evidence in the form of many more cores. This is just one of many stories of scientists working with engineers to answer intriguing climate questions from our past.